Welcome back. Our next presenter is Vinicius Vieira. His presentation today is about steganography on Red Team Operations. Thank you so much, Vinicius, for supporting Great Hat and the Red Team Village. Take it away. The floor is yours. Hi, everyone. My name is Vinicius Vieira, and this talk will talk about steganography on Red Team Operations beyond CDF. I would like to thank the staff of Red Team Village, Omar C. Docs, for this opportunity and encouragement to be here today, share with you a little knowledge. Congratulations for this amazing call. So, for those who don't know me, I am a security researcher and pen tester for over 16 years. I am a professor and academic coordinator at FIAP University in Brazil. I am also a veteran and expert in cyber warfare by the Brazilian Army. I have some certifications such as OSP, CH, and others. I am a CVE holder and sports writer. My focus is web apps. I really like research vulnerabilities in this area. I am a member of uh, the C5551, the largest DCG in Brazil. A big hug to my dear friends from the C. I am also a volunteer at Red Team Village. And recently, I joined the HINAC project, Hacking is Not a Crime. Uh, which I believe a lot and I have great pleasure to help and spread the word. But let's stop talking about me and move on. Today, we are going to talk a little about what steganography is. We are going to remember some important concepts and see some ways of implementing this technique in the field of InfoSec, including some very cool out-of-the-box ideas and how to use steganography. Let's talk about the difference between Stigo and polymorphic files, aka polyglots. Let's remember what Red Team operation is, the mindset of the Red Teamer, and if it is possible to use steganography in this scenario. And we are going to present some ways of using steganography and polyglots in Red Team Ops, mainly for bypass antivirus, AMSI, EDR, and so on. Let's go! So, what the fuck is steganography? Steganography is the practice of concealing a file, message, image or video within another file, message, image or video. In other words, the big goal of steganography is to hide information within another legitimate information. And what is the big key for us as ready teamer? Cover files. True steganography can cover up payloads, leaving them practically undetectable. So, despite being widely used in technology and having incredible mathematical implementations, steganography is not a recent technique. It started with the Roman army when they needed to send sensitive messages across the battlefield. They shaved the slaves' heads, wrote on them, waited for their hair to grow and sent these slaves to deliver this message. In this way, even if the slaves were captured, the information will not be discovered. But leaving the history aside and turning to technology, the basic structure of how steganography works is this. We have a message that we need to cover up and he will start threatening it is a payload and a coverage file that will receive this payload through a steganography encoded process, becoming a Stigo artifact. And this steganography may even have a key or not. A clear example for those who have a red play at CTF is Stegheide, that allows you to insert steganography in an image using a key. This artifact will be sent through a certain way to your recipient. Thinking as a red teamer, we have a different ways of delivering this artifact, correct? And when it is received by its receiver, by the target, for example, this artifact needs to go through the reverse process for the payload to be withdrawn. In other words, the technique is simple. And maybe you are thinking, how do I deliver without my artifact being scored? Or how to remove the payload of this artifact to be executed on target? There are some ways and tools that can help us in this process, but we will comment ahead. If you 
you have played CTF in your life, you should already know that there is steganography in mage, correct? Even the stag hide we mentioned at the early is an example of a tool for this purpose. If you have already done HB Stego Challenge, you also know that there are steganography in audio files. Even HB has a wonderful Stego Challenge for those who want to try it. Wherever mathematically it is possible to use steganography technique in any file type. Imagine hide a payload in a network package, for example. Well, this is also a single technique used to data filtration and we will see more soon. What needs to be clear here is the big goal of Stego is to hide something in something else. Make sure that you want to hide is only revealed at the right time. Well, talking a little about the implementation technique of steganography, digital, obviously, one of the most used is LSB, acronym for least significant bit. This technique uses a very interesting mathematical model because it manipulates the least significant bit in a bit chain. That is, the rightmost bit, regardless of whether you use a decimal or binary base, the rightmost bit will always be the least significant. The bit whose change value does not make a significant change to the total value. Look at this example of the Mona Lisa where the LSB was changed. Note that the RGB value of the pixel has changed, but it was such an insignificant change that the human eye practically impossible to detect. There are several other mathematical implementations for Stego, but LSB is the most common. There are several ways to use steganography today, and obviously one of them, and perhaps the most used, is in CTFs. There are many very interesting challenges that make us think a lot to be able to capture a flag. Recently, in my class, I talked about SSTV protocol and how it can be used as implementation of audio steganography. This protocol is used to send images through sound waves in a certain frequency range. Our students sent images from one cell phone to another using only audio file. What is video? Pretty cool, huh? This link on my wiki has the Python code and the how-to for this activity. Cool! So far we remember what steganography is and how it is used in CTFs, but do you know the polymorphic files? They are also very useful for covering up payloads in Reddit and Ops. They are files that can coexist two or more different file types in one. But how it is possible? In this example, we have a polyglot file that is a war and valid elf. Not that in the output of the file command he identifies the it as elf because it is header starts with the magic number of an elf. Here. Here we see the entire elf structure through the strings, and it really is, is a valid elf, you know? But here we have the rar including in its rather and content. The rar is a valid file, and we have two valid files in a single file. This type of file is very interesting because in certain scenarios where the target has endpoint security that does analysis based on the file type, for example, we can hide a malicious payload that will not be detected. 
We will see an example of this later. So, very cool all this so far. We already seen cool things that we can do with stag and polyglots, but where are the red team techniques using what we have seen here? It is really possible to use steganography and polyglots in red team ops. And why would we decide to use these techniques in red team operation? Let, let's talk about it. Here are some of the main attributes of a red team. Obviously, they are all important, but for me, one of the main ones would be adversarial emulation. The main focus of a red team activities is to simulate the actions of threat actor, not only in techniques, but mainly in mindset. Adversarial emulation would be actions that simulate the real environment of an attack. If your target has EDR or AMSI, you need to model your action to bypass these defense technologies. For this, you must think as a threat actor thinks, you need to perform action as stealth as possible to not be detected. And this is where Stigl and Polyglots come in because they can help the Red Team operator to carry out their actions in stealth mode. If you analyze the kill chain of a Red Team op, we can identify some phases where the importance of acting in stealth mode grows, such as during the initial compromise or exfiltration. They are moments where a small slip can do if you watch the red team operation is discovered and it is action is unsuccessful. An important detail here is the pen test's focus is on discovering vulnerabilities and how to exploit them. So, the red team's focus is to exploit the vulnerabilities in the most real environment possible. That is, its goal is always to be how to carry out your actions without being caught. In other words, impersonation, the threat actor. And to exemplify everything you have discussed so far, we are going to demonstrate some proof of concept. Start with the use of polyglots in red team operations. You are ready? The first one is well known not only for red teamers but also for bug hunters is the cross-site script polyglots. Not only the web application files but also several modern development frameworks have measures to identify and prevent the most common cross-site script attacks like a simple JavaScript alert and many other of these based in signature of a cross-site script syntax. For that, we can change the syntax a bit to bypass these defense measures. A very nice alternative is to use ECMA script to write your JavaScript syntax while still using an innocuous SVG element. This technique is very cool and has a red broke to me a CVA. The concept here is simple. He writes a precise script so that the interpreter does not identify the code being injected and, and execute what we want. So, another very interesting technique for using polyglots is the covert channel. Imagine with me a scenario where the red team operation has compromised an environment that has a defense mechanism, such as a Rust intrusion detection system, for example, or simply does not want to leave it a trail. Running commands on the fly would not be always solve the problems, and for this we can use polyglots. In this example, we have an image of a very cute kitty, a valid JPEG file. Yes, I use the kit to appeal to emotion, okay? A red teamer always uses a little bit of social engineer. <laughs> but look at this cutie. This image has a reverse shell, you know? Shall we see in action?
This technique can be useful to hide malicious script or cover up tracks left without common history. And the coolest thing is, the skidden payload was not detected in the virus total static analysis. Cool, isn't it? But how to raise such powerful keys? Obviously, you can do it manually using a hex editor, for example. But there are some really cool tools that can help you in this process. Like, for example, Don't Kill My Cat. Suggestive name, right? Snow Crash, which is very interesting. And Polyshell, which focuses on developing reverse shell using the concepts of the polyglots. Use it wisely, okay? So, and going back to our beloved Stegos, now you will see some really cool ways to use the concept of steganography in Reddit in Ops. One of the main characters of a good command and control system is being to able to hide this communication channel to make detection difficult. And what will be better to hide a communication channel than steel? There are some interesting techniques to hide communication channel of your situ, such as using Twitter message, for example. And steganography has also been used for this purpose for a while, such as the Instagram that had payloads on Instagram images. An interesting situ framework for adversarial emulation that uses steganography is DALI. DALI is an open source and its code is available on GitHub. He used Imager to host steganography images with C2 commands, in addition to creating albums and on Imager with the response of the agents on each target. Its operation is simple. It uses LSB to embed the commands in the images and submits them to Imager. The client browses to Imager by searching for keywords related to title, for example, using the results of the search the client attempts to decode a writing task from the image binary data. If all goes well, the communication channel is established and very well hidden. And if you want to know more about C2 Framework, see the project C2 Matrix by George Orkilis, one of the big names at InfoSec. I'm very grateful for George sharing a little of his work with me for this talk, so thanks, George. So, one of the coolest and perhaps my favorite Wobi data is filtration using the steel. It's an incredible technique because you don't need much, obviously. When I say a lot, I mean more than the basics of network protocols and a little Python, for example. One thing we see a lot, there are professionals who follow the path of tools instead of the path of solid fundamentals. Tools are amazing, but using them without knowing what's going on is a serious mistake and it doesn't make you grow as a professional, okay? And talking a little bit about fundamentals, for those who don't remember, of course, this is an example of a ICMP header. Like other network protocols, ICMP has a data field, and if you don't know, this field is an ideal place to store things. After all, ICMP package traveling on, on your network is not something malicious, is it? Well, that's where are you going. In this proof of concept, I use a Pyx field, which is a Python lib to manipulate ICMP packages and insert the contents of a given file into them. Note that I can easily filter the contents of this file from one machine to another using a single one-liner Python command. When receiving packages through TCP dump, for example, just decode their contents that came in Base64 and have access to the contents of the file 
that was exfiltrated from the target. There are several ways to exfiltrate data like that, not just in use SMP, of course, you can do this through HTTP, DNS, and much more. And voila! Another very interesting technique is the use of STIGL for bypass in antivirus or endpoint securities. This technique is being used on a large scale in the world of cybercrime because its effectiveness is very great and many malware developers have opted for it. Many famous malware use this technique, such as the Lockbolt, Botnet, Gatak, Vundu, and among others. Europol has even created a cybercrime department exclusively for research and awareness about malware using STIGL, the criminal use of information hiding department. This is an example of a kill chain for using STIGL malware. Note that I use it for the concept of the payload concealed in another vector, in this case a vector with STIGL in an image roasted on the internet, to increase the probability of not being detected. Dissecting this technique, we have this, a cover file that will usually be a doc with a macro, obviously sent through a phishing campaign, for example. This macro will call a dropper, which will usually be an image with steganography payload, and this payload will be opened on the target to finally perform your action. Obviously, for this technique to be successful, I need to be careful with the point of failures. One of these macro that needs to be obfuscated, of course. Many EDRs detect malicious activity in macros before the dock is opened, so be careful with this technique. In this proof of concept, I use PSMH, the powerful PowerShell script that uses STIGL to encode payloads in image and already regenerates a one-line command to execute on the target. My payload will be a simple reverse shell TCP in PowerShell, of course, and PSMH will generate a set alias syntax that will download our image. Of course, in this case, I have a red roasted room that image on the server. Will and PS image will decode the payload and execute on the target. Okay, my one liner is ready. I need to change address to my image roasted on the internet. And I use a dock with a macro to run the, my one-liner at PowerShell prompt and I'm going to save this file. My macro is ready. With my address, image address. I put some content in this this file. My malicious doc is saved, and I will open my list on the attacking machine.
look that the connection is open and we are inside the target now. And the most interesting thing about this technique is that it is not detected by any antivirus engines. In this case, I submitted my doc to the virus total and it was not detected as a malicious. This technique is very stealth and very difficult to be detected. And this is precisely why more and more cyber criminals have been using it. Obviously, there is not only PS image, of course. There are other cool tools that use stenography to help us cover up payloads. One of these is Package Whisper of TriCatch, which has presented at DEFCON 26. It uses Tegel to extrude data through GNS queries. We have the Tegel dropper that generates Tegel artifacts with encoded payloads, and Spokeware is a loaded dropper generator. You can bypass the countermeasures of the target system like a boss until they learn the techniques and behavior of Spokeware payloads. Very, very cool. Well, guys, that is it. I hope I have shared something useful to you. My idea here was not to dissect a technique or two, but rather to show the possibilities of steel and polyglots in mainly, so that you can see that these concepts can be much more useful than just in CTFs. On this QR code, have all proof of concepts presented in this talk. I appreciate the opportunity and there are my contacts for those who want to chat me. So thanks.